So good afternoon. Uh, it's really great to you know meet you, meet you awesome people and to share my work here. And uh, my name is Hoki Chan, and uh, I'm a wireless hardware uh, security researcher in you know in the team Unicron team and uh, Chihu University, so which we located in China. And uh, initially, I have a colleague. Sorry, one moment. Initially, I have a I have a colleague uh, to you know give presentations with me, but uh, he had an issue with his visa, so he can't make it. Really sorry about that. Uh, so now I need to stand here alone and make this presentation. So it's my third time to give presentation here and uh, share my team's work. And uh, I hope some some of you can re will remember me and just don't beat me for my per accent and my per explanation. Uh, so, uh, I will, I'm sorry, yeah, I will explain and uh, demonstrate the, uh, demonstrate you guys how to build an uh, NFC tool from scratch. So, uh, in the end, maybe some of you can get a skills and uh, steal someone's money uh, from his credit card and uh, please don't, please don't tell anybody you learn from here, all right? Yeah. So let's just step to the topic. So here's the agenda of this presentation, and uh, I just draw a simple, uh, simple diagram. So I would introduce my great team and lead you guys back to the old time when we're trying to hack something, some some NFC cards, uh, some something with RFID. So. Uh, that's, and get back to the old-fashioned but powerful hacking tools we used to use, okay? And uh, uh, then the details of the newest RFID hacking tools, uh, which is my tools, the UniProxy, will be introduced. Uh, so two demos will be showed by the video, and uh, uh, I hope this one will work, okay? So the presentation is about how to build uh, two, so I will focus on more of the, on the idea and instead of some hacking skills and uh, hope won't let, let you guys disappointment. So, uh, so by the way, this is the last, last, last presentation of the day, I think. So uh, I will try this fast and fun and uh, I hope to won't delay you guys, I don't know, find this trip. And, uh, so here is the first quick demo of some, my hacking tool, and I will let you guys have a simple impression of the uni proxy. So let's just uh, okay, this, this won't work. Uh, so I will stop at any moment and to give you explanation, okay? So you can see on the table there are uh, is this. Oh, this is nice. uh, so there are two hardware which uh, you, you know is UniProxy and uh, one cell phone to get notification and uh, one post, post machine and one credit card with, tap and, uh, with chip and pin. So now we just turn our hardware on and uh, turn our post machine on and choose how, ma how much money you want to spend. So you can see we place one credit card just near the uh, UniProxy master, master part, and now we just uh, get the post machine near to our UniProxy slide part. So you can just uh, tap it, and now, just one moment, it's processing it. Now you got a receipt. So you don't need to, you know, uh, so in this way, you can just steal someone's money with, you know, just tap his credit card. And uh, if you want to steal someone's money, you know, some credit card with chip and pin, and you just tap somewhere and without password to process a payment, right? So, but if you want to try to steal money, you don't, apparently you can't just hold a giant post machine to steal his money, or he will just call the cops, right? So now you can just, with a simple card, to get around of him and just tap it. Now you can get the uh, get his money. And uh, maybe someone just want to ask: uh, Is there any security protocol using the credit card? And how did you just 
you know, use some 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 other people's uh, credit card and uh, use it to pay and. Uh, <laughs> So here is the uh, so that's the uni Uniproxy two we just built. Um, so uh, I just want to introduce the team of team of uh, I just want to introduce my team and uh, which you just know uh, our name is Unicorn team and uh, we are an sec internal security team a research team of Chihu Security and uh, we also founded in 2014. So we focus on the wireless hardware hacking, hacking and defensing, and uh, we do a lot of security research and uh, hardware development, and also the pen test, uh, we, and also the pen test. So we do have a uh, serial uh, wireless security research uh, published in the DevCon and the Black Hat, and uh, maybe some of you heard it before. So it's about some low cost GPS spoofing and which uh, presented in three years ago and uh, also uh, RT direction attack and which present in here and uh, last year. So, uh, and also we do have a power communication attack on the DEF CON last year. And uh, this year, I, I don't know have you guys heard it, heard it. Uh, it's about the ghost telephonist and which you, we can just uh, Hijack and uh, uh, spoof your your call, your SMS, even you are on the 4G RTE network. So, so that's I think that's uh, that's a little bit cool. And uh, we also have some hardware development. So uh, we do have a lot of hacking tools, and uh, we do have the hack ID. Uh, the, but most uh, focus on the RFID. Okay. Just uh, some hack ID, hack ID pro, and etc. So you can see all the details in our, I'm sorry, yeah, in our website. So let's just. Uh, I believe you guys are not inexperienced in the near field communication uh, hacking because it's widely used in our life, right? So. Uh, your credit card, your ID card, and uh, your security door card, and uh, it's 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 really inside uh, around all of us. So the NFT card don't need power uh, itself and to take the power of the reader. So uh, there are many protocols using NFT cards, uh, such as ISO 14443 and uh, ISO 15673 uh, uh, and etc. But now we only focus on our our tools on the ISO 14443. Okay. And uh, uh, just for an example, so this protocol is basically the most popular protocol in NFC cards. Uh, it supports many applications. So in China, the security card, the, the your passport, and the, your bank card, your bank card, all based on this protocol. So uh, uh, it's the world use leads to a lot of tacking methods. You know, aiming on the NFC card. And uh, also, I do that too. So here is what we are aiming. Uh, why do we want to hack an NFC card? So as we mentioned before, we are hackers, and of course, we want to fake someone's security card to enter some forbidden area. And also, some people might want to uh, want to use other people's credit card, just like me. Uh, yeah, instead of mine. <laughs> Yeah, which I highly recommend you don't do that. <laughs> uh, for me, that's that's that is there is another story. Okay, uh, the, my co <laughs> my company has uh, my company is a huge company in China, so I have a strict uh, rules to make sure uh, the co the staff, the co my college, uh, my colleagues will you know to work and off off work in time. So everybody in my company has a unique security card. And uh, the security system will lock the time when you enter every gate and when you enter every room. And uh, so thus, your boss will easily know you are late or not. And uh, so I was thinking maybe I can, uh, so, and also if you are late for your work and your salary will lose, all right. Yeah, so I was thinking maybe I, can, I could build a tool uh, for, to fake my ID card and uh, place it near some 
you know, uh, secluded uh, doors and with a reader. So I don't have to get up early every day. Yeah. But, but, it's, but, but the company is a security company. And uh, actually, the security system is developed by my team. Yeah. So this is awkward. Yeah. So we use the HID card and uh, apparently uh, as our ID card. So I don't know any easy way to fake a uh, HID card. So because we can break a security protocol, it's really hard. So then I was just thinking maybe I can just build a proxy to, to transfer the signal from the, between the reader and the card. So then just let the near turn far away so I can, I can speed up. So when I was thinking, I was thinking I can use the same way on the credit card and with you know the chip and pins. So you you guys can do the you guys do have the chip and pins card, right? You can just buy something and uh, just uh, to tap somewhere and without the password. So you uh it also based on the MC tag, so we are able to just to hijack it. So, I'm sorry. Let's go out to so the way we just used to hack is to have, uh, just like to have a quick review that what we use it to do, okay? To, we use it to use a Primark 3 and we use it to uh, Chamberlain Mini and uh, this is, the, the Primark 3 is the best uh, FID hacking tools I use it to use. Uh, yeah, we, I also use it, uh, Chamberlain Mini and uh, this, these two are focused on the protocol. So with the, uh, Program three, you can just hack uh, high frequency and low frequency in both ways. So you, uh, it's very powerful. But uh, with another one, it's just a focus on the ISO one four 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 three, and uh, you can just uh, you can just clone a card if you can crack it. But uh, most uh, mostly focus on the Mifair, uh, Mifair Classic one K or Mifair Classic four K. So. There's also another way, such, uh, just like us, it's a proxy to the, uh, I think they are targeting the, t the Z. So it's a uh, two app, Android app. So you can Google it, uh, you can Google it and download it and trust it, uh, and try it. So it's named the NFC proxy and NFC get. But um, I use them, they are not very, very, I don't know, maybe not fit in Chinese environments, but that's okay. This, uh, this, those tools are just inspired me how to build a proxy too. And um, so why not? Uh, why not we use a Prime Three? So it is even though it supports a many protocols and it's powerful, but it can hack a credit card. Or I guess we got we guys all rich now. Yeah. So and why don't we use the NFC gate or NFC proxy? Uh, it's based on Android and uh, it's, uh, it can it's use modified firmware to realize your NFC data. And it can monitor transmitted data, and um, uh, but it relies on the Wi-Fi. So the delay on the Wi-Fi network is really huge, and it can be tolerable. But too much delays to complete the the whole payment procedure, and uh, that's why I didn't use it. So let's just say I build another build. So why do why do I need this too? As I just mentioned before, I want to. I want to sleep well and I want to you know, earn money. And uh, I inspired by the mentioned brilliant hacking tools, and, uh, but I want to make it faster. So I was thinking uh, my team can build a lot of hardware. So let's just focus on the pure hardware solution. Um, and also, uh, this tool is completely self-designed and modified. So everything we can need is just protected by us. So we don't need to rely on reading some other source code or, uh, to, to protect another Halloween design. We just build our own. So I just want to uh, introduce what is Uniproxy. So I believe you guys have a clear view now. Uh, it's uh, an PN7462AU uh, six, best NFC pro uh, proxy tool. So it's a chipset which manufactured by the AXP. Uh, Currently, this device is only support ISO one four 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 three eight protocol now, but it can easily to you know to extend it for some other protocols as long as the chipset supports. Uh, so now the device are targeting the QuickPass credit card. So I don't know if it, uh, if you guys uh, 
the American quick version QuickPass name may be EMV or VisaPay, but it's similar. Uh, the UniProxy contains two parts, the, the, the reader emulator and a card emulator, which I call them a master one and the slave one. So the payment transmit information will be transferred between the master and the slave uh, via the 24L01 chipset, which means it's point-to-point -point wireless data transmission. So as I just mentioned, it's easily to extend, uh, adapt it to ISO 14443B and uh, 15693 standard MC card. So it's it's another protocol, but uh, as you know, it's opened and you can just, and the chipset supports it, so you can modify it by yourself. So here is the core of Uniproxy. Uh, we use PN chipsets as a core. So it's, an, uh, as I mentioned, it's an XP chip and the support full Mifair family of uh, cards. It's, it can read, it can write, and emulate a card, and uh, quite powerful. And it's really rare chip used, I, I think, uh, because uh, th this is uh, because when, our, when I try to find some document, it's not easy to, it's not easy to Google it. So then it's to say we didn't buy the service, uh, service of NXP, so we don't have any official sp support. So, but we are practice, right? So the, the architecture of Uniproxy is, as I said on the screen, it's, another one. it's simple. And we use uh, a simple electronic circuit design which uh, slide modified by the NXP official recommendation. So don't worry about the hardware design. It's, it's not a big deal, not a big issue. So its chipset is highly integrated and very powerful. This is the, also the reason oh, we choose this one. So this is the front face of our Uniprox 2. So you can see the NFC antenna uh, here. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is the antenna. So sorry about that. I use a pen on my iPad to to mark this because I'm not good at the PowerPoint. So this is the antenna with the team logo on it, and uh, in the left corner, where is oh, where is oh is it here in the left corner, uh, you can see the power supply circuit, and uh, this too is powered by lithium batteries. So just so it's also chargeable. So you can take this outside and do something evil and. Uh, Without any notice, so in the right side, it's you can see the uh, the two four L O one chip chip model. We use we use this chipset to communicate between the master and slave. So I don't know if you guys see the core chip. It's right on here. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit dark. It's an XP chip under the end of the narrow. Mm, it's a little bit dark, so you can see the hardware of this hacking tool is quite simple. It uh, isn't complicated. Uh, it's not compli uh, complicated at all. So with the official recommendation of everybody can draw their... Uh, where's my... Oh, there it is. So with the of uh, official recommendation, everybody can draw and map their own device and uh, build a same one. But, uh, um, it's quite easy, so don't don't fret. So this is the back side of the Mars part. You can see there's nothing else, just a antenna, just a battery, and uh, after the hardware design, I'd like to introduce the software design here. Uh, so let's step to the software processing of the, this hacking tool. So actually, in my opinion, I really want to, I really believe the source code can explain everything, right? So when I got to make this presentation, I thought, let's just make this open source and uh, voila, we can just, I can just play around. So, but as I, as you see, it's a big company and it's my, not my own work. So, uh, it's quite a company property. And uh, that's why I need to stand here and, uh, only to present a few source codes, screenshots, and uh, then me feels, feels very sorry. So just back to the topic. So, Firstly, you need to uh, init the read library API, and uh, uh, when, uh, and there will be a loop to put our chip and the sniffering in sniffering model, 
and it will detect any RF field to with a uh, protocol we want, we are aiming, and around, uh, if it is the code, we'll just go to the handshake stop. <laughs> so in our math part, as you know, a uh, read emulator will try to run the handshake, and uh, a handshake routine with the, uh, with the card, which just for the RF range of it, and after the handshake, our math part will get the uh, parameters of the card and set a timeout. So then it will pack and transfer all the raw data, uh, raw data to the card emulator immediately. Then the uh, the master will just wait to receive the data, which comes back from the slave, and uh, before the, it's timed out. So if everything okay, the whole routine will just start the block transmission. So you can just uh, download the uh, the the the, PD, uh, the the PDF and you can see the uh, source code detail. <laughs> so this is the block transmit uh, transmission routine and also the last routine of the uh, of the master part. So when it start to transmit I uh, transmit block data and uh, it will just wait a response from the car emulator before before it's time out and then just forward and spray the data uh, to the to the real card, so, and, uh, to the re uh, yeah, the, and the re weighted response of the real card. So if there is something wrong with the real card and it didn't get a response before timeout, the master will notify the slave and, and the communication is ended. Or our, com uh, or our emulator will just get the I block. The I block didn't uh, is a uh, real data, so you can just process it, and you can directly respond to the real card. So you don't need to pack the you don't need to pack the data. You don't need to transfer the data. So uh, it will directly to uh, respond when it's finished the directly response. In the other case, the direct uh, the data will directly forward to the card emulator. So that's form a loop. So until the until the whole uh, procedure is ended. So this is the front of our slave part of our hacking tools. So now you can notice the hardware is almost is exactly the same. So you need, you do, you can build one and the one for master, one for slave. You don't need to you know to to build a uh, different uh, different parts. They are same hardware design, but the software is the most different. So the process of our slave part is just. Uh, you know, just correspond uh, correspond it to the master one, or we can call it master and slave, right? So after the start of the hardware, the program will just init the card emulate function and try to receive the one four 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 three parameters, and uh, from the two seven yeah from the from the URL. As we described before, it's coming from our read emulator. So once it gets the parameters, and uh, the slave one will just send a successful uh, success command response and back to the master master part and notify it. So here is the second part of the slave uh, slave software design. The slave will just start integration with the read emulator and it needs the card emulator. So which received the, the uh, uh, which with uh, received uh, parameters. So if there is a real card reader nearby, so the slave part, uh, which also you know, it's our card emulator will start to communication between the real card with the received parameters. So then it will act like a card, uh, a real a reader card, a real card to make handshake with a real card, a real reader. So then the corresponding to our uh, master part uh, start the block transmission. So the, the card emulation is just uh, more complicated than the card emulator to the software design. Uh, so after the start of the block transmission, uh, the card emulator will receive data from a real one. So if the data is not I block data, the, the slave will detect if it is deselect command, and if it is, just, forget, just forward to the reader emulator and uh, you know, send this command to a re real reader. So this process will just save time. So if there is a S block instead, uh, R block uh, instead of R block data, uh, so the card emulator will just process it by itself. So back to the upper level, 
um, a card emulator will just forward the data to, to a card. Uh, to a car emulator and send a delay command after half time waiting. And uh, this is actually we also level up the success rate because uh, it's uh, a success rate, uh, rate a very, very efficiently because there will be always be some unexpected delays. So then the slave and uh, uh, so the, then the slave part will receive data from a reader emulator and uh, then forward it to a real reader and uh, all the Actions would would form a loop and uh, would cooperate with the reader and uh, read emulator and finally finish the whole transmission. So in the end of in the end, you can just uh, uh, complete a uh, morning tra transmission procedure. So the principle I just described is very simple, but uh, I would like to know. Uh, I would like to, you to know there was a lot of issues that occurred in the development. So I would like you know to you know to have an impression that you have when you stuck in the you know if you want to make a new proxy too. Okay. So first, the chipment, the chipset we just use can't cannot change the first byte of UID. So. Uh, it's it's burned in the firmware, so it can change the UI uh, the first byte of the UID of your chipset. So it's uh, it will always be zero to eight. Uh, it's but uh, luckily, if you want to fake a credit card, uh, the credit card reader won't uh, verify the first uh, verify the UID uh, through won't fi verify your credit card via UID and. Uh, um, and we didn't find a way to modify it in a long, in our long time test, but because uh, uh, most of the money related application won't check the identity, the card with the UID, and the on other hand, I think it's a good way to prevent this kind of attack. So secondly, the waiting and the wake up time is a real issue when you are developing a a proxy tool. When you be uh, 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 it's a real issue when you want to develop an NFC proxy tool. So as you know, the NFC uh, card it doesn't carry a power, right? So uh, it uses a power from a reader, and uh, if the re if the card haven't received any response from a reader, and you will lose the power and turn off. So apparently, the whole attacking progress is just failed. So please remember to modify and uh, wake up a time, and when you're programming. So remember the hacking tool, NFC gate, uh, which I just used uh, in my in my experiment, and uh, uh, it's it's uh, that's that's the same reason I said okay, I don't want to use this tool because it didn't modify the wake time, and uh, it also used a Wi-Fi network. It won't. It also increased the delay time. So uh, just remember to modify the wake up time. Okay. Uh, thirty. Okay. Thirty. In order to fasten the whole pro uh, progress, we don't need to transfer all kind of data between the reader emulator and our card emulator. So we just need to transfer I block data and this is directly trans progress S or R block uh, block data to responder in a real time. So it's also mentioned in ISO 14443A part 4. So please just read it carefully. And um, also the power supply may also cause the corrupt of the of the chipset. So if you want to design the hardware of the uh, of the power circuit, you can just uh, you can just use a regular and don't try to use any tricks. Okay. So uh, let's just see another demo video of our in our real environment, which I use the someone's credit card to buy a Big Mac in the McDonald's. <laughs> so you can see we turn on the master one and step one. So you can see someone's wallet just pass here and you some. Uh, of course, I didn't steal someone's money. It's it's my credit card. Okay. 
confirm the payment. Start preparing. And use Apple Pay or Quick Pass. Just place it and just grab your food. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we just described how to attack a credit card, right? So this is how we defend it. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I saw a lot of people use a uh, blocking sleeve to protect the card. And also, there is a RFID wallet to prevent this, this kind. And this, this, uh, there are also the good ways, and uh, you can use it. And also, we have the RFID jammer, which, uh, of course, I built it. Uh, I, we designed and manufactured one, but uh, um, yeah, we sell it and uh, nothing else. As and a uh, guard bunny, you can you uh you in America I think you can just buy a blocking sleeve and RFID wallet or just guard bunny. It's high, really high efficiency. I I, rem I recommend you to have a try. So, uh, here's a summary and uh, what we learned in this development. So you need to read the protocol and the uh you need to re read the protocol and the document well and uh, it's a lot of tricks inside. So. Uh, better not to develop it without official support because when we are using the X speech sets, it's, it's really a waste of time because we are stuck in some, uh, some weird mistakes and uh, we just can't read the document. There is no official support. And we developed this about uh, using, I think, six months. And uh, if with uh, official support, I think this could be done in two months. So furthermore, I I like to uh, said we what do we want to improve. So we want to improve the transmission range up to 100 meters. Now currently, we can use this master and slave uh, such as about uh, more than 50 minutes. Uh, fi I'm sorry, 50 meters. So you can I can just stand here and around you. So my partner will stand about 50 meters away and to steal your 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 information, steal your money. Yeah. But uh, with uh, uh, with some kind of amplifier, we can just level up the the range to 100 meters. It's it's, it's easy, but uh, we need to do that. And also, we as I just said, my my initial point is to fake my security ID card. But uh, you know, the the range between my home and uh, to my company is about uh, six kilometers away. So I need to fix uh, I need to fix this issue, right? Yeah. <laughs> And also, I want to make this uh, self compatibility uh, because when it uh, now it's just attacking one uh, ISO, you know, one four 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 three A, and uh, I want to make it uh, adapted to HID, adapted to one five six nine three, and I want to let uh, let it to uh, you know it know which protocol it is using, and I want to make it. So the rest is how and. Uh, I just want to make this fast and uh, uh, publish it on the network so everybody can, you know, everybody can learn and everybody can build their own proxy tools. So we re here is our reference, and I want to really thank them, and uh, also the hardware division of my team and uh, uh, the MC tools, uh, which inspired me a lot. So, any question?